Today, we're gonna build a bike, but instead of doing the, uh, the normal like, here's what I'm building, here's what it is, here's the stuff that's going on it, boring montage of it getting built, I'm just gonna use this as an opportunity to go over my high level three like main points. So if you find yourself constantly stumped, not finishing projects or not starting projects because it's like too much, watch this video. Um, I hope it helps. Okay, so step one, we'll call these steps. Step one is buying your donor frame, in this case, or donor bike. And just remember these two things. If it's kind of got the shape that you want, that you like envision and you're like, yeah, that's, that's like, that's kind of what I'm going for. And the price is right, that's the correct bike. Yeah, there's all these other factors that everybody likes to kind of like fudge up the conversation with like brands or uh, tubing type or weld type or this, that. All of the very traditional means of determining quality. And while all of those can do and will absolutely play into the quality of finish, I am telling you, you can build something rideable, enjoyable, cool looking, that you'll be happy with no matter what it is. Believe me, this old made in Canada rally, I don't even think it has an actual, it's not good. It doesn't have good tubing. It's obviously MIG welded. It's not great. This tube, this is actually just like, a, this is a seamed pipe. You can see the seam in it. Like every joint in this literally has no drillings in it to release any heat whatsoever. This thing is by most definitions, trash. It's basically garbage. It's like a little above garbage because it's not broken. Well, actually that's not true. It is broken. It's cracked right here a little bit. But beyond that, it's like one step above trash. But I'm still gonna build something out of it. Now with any like uh, cheap sight unseen purchase, definitely some, uh, Unforeseeable would be the wrong word. Foreseeable problems that will require overcoming. Why did that work? Persistence, a positive attitude, and a lot of liquid wrench will get you out of a lot of jams. I believe I've mentioned this before in past vlogs, but Growing up, I had one guitar magazine. It was like a review issue of all the guitars that were released that year. And the like, the prologue, the, the paragraphs written before it, had this one thought sort of like talking about these expensive guitars that were being reviewed that went something very loosely along the lines of any rating that we give these guitars, you have to keep in mind that you've got to get the one that gets you the most excited. The one that gets you going the most, that makes you want to play it. Do you really think Jack White would be playing, insert the guitar company here, if he was only playing for quality? I read that when I was like 12 years old and that has been seared into my brain. I remember that every time that I'm looking for something like this and I know that someone somewhere is gonna go, that's a piece of crap why would you do anything with that? And I'm like, I wanted to build it. And it didn't really cost anything. No, this phrase is not coined by me. It is stolen directly from David Freiberger of Hot Rod Magazine. Don't get it right, 
just get it running. That means scrounge for cheap parts, do what you can to make parts that you've already got work, make them fit, whatever it takes, because there is nothing more motivating for continuing on with a project than getting on it, riding up and down your driveway or your apartment building, whatever, for the first time, it running under its own power. Power. Because nothing has the ability to derail or throw something onto the back burner more than doing it right. If you picked up a complete bike, reuse every single thing that you can. Do what you need to do to get it into a running state, even if it's not exactly the final product that you were looking for. Take for example, what I would truly like to build the new skateboard BMX hauler into. I would prefer that it has a front rack, not a one and one eighth threaded fork. I wouldn't want to be running these handlebars. I definitely would prefer a different set of brakes. I'd build a cool set of wheels for it. The, uh, the road cranks that are on here, even though this has a 68 millimeter bottom bracket shell, the road cranks are like, they're pretty narrow. If I didn't hit the chain stays with a hammer, they would hit the chain stays. I truly would prefer to have the Fairdale skate rack on this, but a skateboard can, as we know, go on top of this without a whole lot of issue. I would have welded the crack that was in this. Uh, definitely wouldn't be using these old worn out 26 inch tires that I found in the literal garbage bag that's in here. I was gonna throw these out. Thankfully I didn't and it made it so that I could actually literally ride this thing today. Also, as a small sidebar, uh, I feel like there's gonna be a little bit of confusion here. The subject in the title of this video is Spin Dad's Guide to Building a Cool and Cheap Bike, not a nice cheap bike. Um, this bike is, uh, it's not nice by any stretch of the imagination, but it is cool because it has been fixed with a grinder, it has been fixed with a hammer, it has been put together with all of the spare parts that I had around here, and it will be ridden again. Something that could have been thrown into the trash, riding again. Also, I've noticed that there's this real correlation between someone's genuine excitement about a finished product and that genuine excitement's ability to be contagious for other people looking in. A good example of that failing, I think, is the guru. So take that for what it's worth. If you put together something that you're truly excited about, that you truly think is cool, you will find that many people will agree purely on your excitement. Step three, this is the best part. Ride the thing as you intended, upgrade, repair, tinker as required. Do your best to keep it always in riding condition. Do not get blinded by upgrades and then like buy a bunch of stuff, take the thing apart. And next thing you know, it's sitting aside waiting for more parts. Little by little, little by little. From this point where you get it running until about, until about like, two thirds of the way to where you get it to your, your like perfection level. Those are going to be your favorite moments. Those are gonna be the most fun times you have working on and riding whatever cool, cheap bike you're trying to build. There absolutely is a point that you will reach with just about every project you start, if the bug bites the right way, that you'll find yourself wanting to be between this point and the point of finished always. It truly is a never ending cycle. So I guess as like a, so I guess as like a bonus step four, start over again. Between like the last scene and this one, I've already changed the front. I found a bigger front tire and it fits really good. It looks, let's just finish this video with like one shot of this thing with the bigger front tire and the skateboard on and then the video will be Done.